Well, good morning, guys, and welcome back to Winding and Racing. Well, this morning, I'm working on a little project that I started quite a few months ago, and then I got sidetracked with Rally Bug. And in the process of bringing in more projects and having to move vehicles around, uh, I decided I needed to fix uh, one of the problems I had with the golf cart. I built this car basically because I was at a yard sale and I picked up this rear axle assembly off a golf cart which is very cool because it has forward and reverse gears uh, within that. Now I was going to use this Honda 200cc motor on it, 5 speed, uh, which would, uh, you know, make this thing get up and go, but there's like so, some major things that would have to be done, a jack shaft going around to power this. So we had this one generator that the generator part of it didn't work, but it has a really good and strong motor on it. So I decided I'm gonna use that. I got a clutch coming, which basically, it's like a centrifugal clutch, which will, through a band, will turn this, which will enact all this. And then, got the gear shifts on that that I'll have to route cables and everything up to the front. But, one of the problems that I had with this steering system was I made it, I made my own rack and pinion, and there's a video to show how I did this. Basically, I got a, a sprocket in here, a counter shaft sprocket, in here i welded chain to this bar and as it turns it moves us back and forth rack and pinion but if you see all the counter shafts were the same size until yesterday i did this yesterday uh but see i cut that one off there and i made this hub and then i put a nice big one because the whole system was like one to one which you turn the steering just a little bit and i mean the wheels are just bam bam which gives you absolutely no leverage and no power in the steering at all and it turned too quick but another problem i had was i wanted to make sure i had no bump steer in setting up this uh, this steering system so basically to eliminate bump steer you have all the pivot points uh, to be parallel to each other and so as you bounce everything works the same amount which will eliminate any kicking of the wheel out okay that's how you eliminate the bump steer but in doing that if you can see i got this rod going straight towards the spindle rod there the attachment there well instead of pushing the tire out to steer i'm basically pushing it right into the spindle which there again it's not turning the wheels so that was a very difficult thing and then if i turned it like all the way it would actually invert and kick all the way over so i mean this is a mess so these spindles were off of a quad and i went and i looked at the quad and they basically have the rods going straight across so what i'm gonna do today and right here you can see i put this pin straight across so i can get a measurement here i'm gonna cut a section out of here and move the rack and pinion in so it will actually be pushing the tires out now this is not a long travel suspension i'm not worried too much about too much bump steer as long as i have the arms and the tie rods all parallel uh i should be okay with that but uh you know this was all just something i came up with chain drive steering i mean this is all really pretty kick-ass what I'm doing here but I do not I need to make it function properly um, because the clutch is coming so this is going to be like a driving vehicle real soon if I can't steer it I'm not going to be able to drive it anywhere so I'm going to get some work done right now I already loosened up 
I had that bolted there. I got this all loosened up and everything. So I'm ready to cut the shaft, pull that rack and pinion out of there. And uh, do a little fabrication. And uh, so I'm going to bring you guys back after I get it moved. And uh, we'll see how this thing works. So I think it's going to work much better because, well, it kind of has to. So we'll see you in a bit. Well, I'm back, guys. And, uh, well, it's been a little bit of work. But uh, let me show you how this steers much, much better now. Now this chain here, this is a slotted bearing here. And what I'm going to end up doing is bring a little piece of steel up here with a bolt that will be able to adjust that. Be able to push that bearing to the side and suck up some of that slack there. But we are now able to turn all the way like it was. And it doesn't lock. One thing it did because the the tie rod will actually flip to the other side of the spindle and uh, then it was locked. So let's go ahead and jump out here and take a look at things. So the rack was all the way out to here. And basically the tie rods were heading straight for the spindle there, which it just didn't work. So I was able to, uh, I had to fabricate these pieces of tubing here. They're not welded in all the way, but they fit perfect. Uh, bolt this guy in there, shorten this shaft here, and welded that right there. It was just held on by a couple of tech screws. Uh, so... It's all sitting pretty firm, and one thing one thing I worried about was bump steer, and uh, like I said, it is such a little bit of travel that uh, bump steer is not going to be an issue, and the rack is basically pushing straight across at the spindles, so that's going to work just fine. Now. One thing I noticed now, dragging these big tires is an issue. So there's a lot of tension on there, but as you can see, even that shift, I'm getting a little bit of flex right there. So what I'm gonna end up doing, cause I do have another one of those bearings right here. So I'm going to have to cut that again and then mount this bearing on in there and then that will hold that so I don't get any flex there. So there's a lot of tension on it now. These tires are a little bit low as you can see. But when you're rolling things turn a lot easier. So I think everything's going to be working out just fine with this steering system now. And so we've got to be able to tighten this. So, a little adjustment here and there, but, uh, you know, basically I took materials that I had here, other than the bearings, I had to order those, uh, and fabricated a car. So, yeah, we'll get it all going, and uh, this will be a fun little thing to drive around, and like I said, it'll hopefully have enough power to be our push car at the pits. This is a pretty big motor, so I think it's going to do okay. That's going to be my next project on this, is actually set that motor where it belongs. Get this guy out of here. That little 200cc motor there is actually going to be part of this little trike project that we're going to be building. I got this rear end off of a quad. So, 200 into this little guy here. Little trike, that'll be fun to build. And then once this is out of the way, then the gas tank can come on up here. And uh, I'm going to build a deck back in here. Maybe a tilt back deck. But, uh, yeah. Just a fun little project uh, like many of our others. Like to keep busy, keep working. So, uh, you guys, thanks a lot for joining me today. And uh, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do it because... 
As you can see, we're uh, getting ready to start on the uh, XJ there that we dragged down from uh, Sam Manuel. Gas tank's in pretty rough shape, so we're going to make sure it runs because it wasn't even running up there. We had to push onto the trailer. Yeah, we're doing a little jerry rigging right now. Well, let's go so take good. a look at it. We got, uh, what do you have, a, a fuel pump stick down in there? Yeah. We got a five gallon jug. Got a little submersible pump here. All right. And I did charge up the battery, so uh, yeah, we'll see if this thing will start up. Tie that up here for now. <laughs> Some real hillbilly action there. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.